Judith. Why, it's beautiful. It's the finest one you've made yet. I'm sure you'll become rich and famous if you follow your art, Gabriel. I don't care if I become rich or not. I only want to see you wear it. Even in front of the others? Yes. They'll surely know it was a gift from you. That's true. I want them to know it. My father, too? And all my brothers? We grew up together, you know. They won't be surprised that we love each other. Tell me, will you wear it? Yes. Look, isn't he pretty? Grandpa gave him to me just now. He's the smartest of all. He's always running away. <laughs> Would you like to have a boy like that? Look, on top of the hill. There was an armed horseman up there, dressed in red. Are you sure of it, Judith? Yes, he looked down at us and then rode away. Hey, look there, on the hill. Judith, come on, hurry. Let's go. Nathaniel. Grandpa, who are they? Hide yourself. See you. Don't move now. You've got to hurry as fast as you can and warn the others who are coming home with the flocks. Run. Yes, Hurry. wait for me. Nathaniel! What has happened? What's happened? Somebody Was it the child? Hurry! They must be in the Judith! Child? Judith, how did it happen? My brothers, it was horrible. My child! My child! Yes. Nathaniel! My baby boy! Oh. <laughs> there were at least eight or ten of them on horseback. They had great quivers full of arrows and they carried very light bows. They were wearing bright red cloaks. What language did these men speak? Who could tell? We only heard a few shouts. And then everything happened like a flash of lightning. The plunderers had left us in peace for more than four years. There are many cities which are far richer than ours. What's more, our harvest has been poor this but year. But they weren't plunderers. I say they weren't plunderers. If Hosea tells you believe what I say, then you must believe it. They were Assyrians. Assyrians? In these regions? Do you mean to say that Hosea hasn't been to Nineveh, that he hasn't traded with the people of the river Tigris? with their light bows and large quivers, wearing red cloaks. They were Assyrians, I tell you. Then they must be from the army of Holofernes. Idle talk, legends of the desert, tales told by camel drivers from the caravan. Holofernes, a sea of men in war chariots, pillage and destruction. <laughs> Why did they decide to strike at us? Our people have always been poor and hardworking, and we've been at peace with everyone. A platoon of cavalry is arriving at the main gate of the city. Keep calm, let everyone stay where he is. Hurry, keep calm. Let's run home! Are there many of them? Yes, a whole army. Send for your commander at once. What is it you want in our city? I want to confer with your king. We have no king here. We are ruled by a council of elders. Well, then lead me to them. Olofernes, the great lord of war and peace, has decided to remain in your city several days so that his troops may rest and refresh themselves in preparation for the battles they must fight in his march toward the conquest of the world. He therefore requests your loyal collaboration and hospitality. 
Within a few hours, he himself will stand before your walls. If the gates are opened with all the honors due to him, he will enter alone, accompanied by only a small escort. And thus he will spare your city from being occupied by the most powerful army ever seen. Are we to interpret what you have said as an invitation to surrender? Only those who are attacked must surrender. Holofernes offers you friendship and protection. He will give you his reply in person when he himself arrives in your city, within a few hours. In battle with them. You heard what he said. He spoke of the conquest of the whole world. To make war, faith is not sufficient. You need plenty of men, weapons, and gold. Here's typical merchants talk for you. Typical cowards talk. If we bow down to them, they'll strip us naked. We should give battle, they'd slaughter every one of us. We're not certain of that yet. And if you are a coward, that doesn't mean the rest of us are. I am not blinded by illusions. I know nothing of these Assyrians. But I do know that if we show ourselves to be feeble and frightened, they will surely have no more respect for us or for our family no, either. No, no. Oziah has spoken well. I say we'd be completely irresponsible. You are completely irresponsible. Calm yourselves, brothers. This won't do. What is your opinion? The Assyrians are far too powerful for us. Furthermore, I ask myself, what possible reason could they have for wanting to be our enemies? Splendid offspring of the sun, conqueror and lord of the mountains and the desert plains below, now commands you. Rise to your feet. Let the chief man of the city come forward. O oh, invincible Holofernes, fearless lord of peace and war, our little city bows its head humbly at your feet. It sues for your friendship and in token of its devotion, it offers you the son of the sun, the divine hall of fairness, is not a brigand of the highway who can be bought with a tray full of miserable tickets. Take them away. You remain here. Now listen and hear his will and do not forget this. It is the will of the God of all the armies. To the city of Bethulia, which has shown itself friendly, will be considered the privilege of entering and becoming part of the great Assyrian Empire, first among the cities of Judea. From this moment, the Assyrian law is your law. Nebuchadnezzar, the great emperor of Assyria will be your sovereign. Your militia must be disbanded at once. And to avoid any heedless actions, all your arms of every type whatsoever must be surrendered immediately. Carts, provisions, herds and flocks, all must be put at the disposal of the Assyrian army. Whoever infringes any one of these regulations will be put to death. And upon pain of death, all must recognize the god Ashur as the supreme god and adore his image. The city of Bethulia can do no other than bow before the power of the great Holofernes. But perhaps he is not aware that our God has imposed a law upon us which we can never transgress, and which says, Thou shalt not have any strange gods before me. There is only one law, the law of the Assyrians. Be quiet, you! 
I imagine the divine hollow furnace would like a little rest. We have prepared an apartment for his use, certainly not worthy of him. Who are you? I am Osiah, the merchant who has carried his trading to Nineveh. Therefore, he appreciates the might of Assyria and the magnificence of your glorious city. From now on, you'll be your people's representative. So far as I'm concerned, you're the chief man of the city. See to it that they respect my wishes. How can I express Although myself? fairness does not expect thanks, but obedience, you will come with us. seen to the decoration of your apartment. She has done what she could with what she had. Unfortunately, we're not in your splendid Nineveh. She's beautiful as I. She's even worthy of Nineveh. people of Bethulia here? Why, all of them, no, but... Why don't you confess that many of them have shut themselves up in their houses and refused to come out? Well, you see, the, um... Uh... That house over there. Get them out at once. Our God alone. Silence! To the ground! Shoot! O oh, great and terrible Lord Ashur, Lord of war and slaughter, be pleased always to grant victory to your brother Halifernes, so that he may pour out before your feet like a great sea the lifeblood of his and your enemies. and drag them back here. I want them alive, you hear? Alive. You can all see the divine hall of fairness. What could avail the weapons of a few feeble assassins against the son of the sun, who has passed a thousand times in the midst of fire, who has seen in hundreds and hundreds of victorious battles, lances and swords splintered into fragments when they struck him. They could do no more than arouse his divine anger. The prisoners that we took last night have still not talked, not even under torture. Can it be possible that the population of Bethulia wishes to offer protection to the cowardly assassins who lurk about in the shadows? All of us are filled with horror at what has happened, and we are deeply and sincerely distressed. You'll spare us words that are meaningless, Ozaya. All of fairness wishes again to be magnanimous. You say that you are filled with horror at what has happened. Then show that you are. Surrender those who are guilty. 
Four days from today, the great hall of fairness will once again take up the march which will carry him to the far ends of the earth. You have four days in which to act. If by dawn of the fifth day the guilty men have not been given up, the population of Bethulia will be put to death and the city burned and razed to the ground. It will disappear forever from the face of the earth. Let the high priest stand before me. Speak to me of your God. I want to know what he's made of, who he is, and where is this invisible God of yours, who gives you the courage and the effrontery to rise in rebellion and threaten me. The Lord our God is invisible because he is pure spirit. And we are bound to believe in him and adore him as the one and only true God who dwells in heaven, on earth, and in every place. He is even here, therefore. Even here. That is what we are taught by our law. Well, then, why does he not come at once to your assistance? Why doesn't he save you? Why is it I haven't been destroyed? I was never before aware that you existed. I came upon you by chance in my line of march. And now you have the insolence to challenge me in the name of your strange and invisible God. I accept the challenge. I will subjugate all of Judea. I will lay seats to the capital. I'll destroy the temple of your God. I'll destroy the temple of your God. Vashu the Almighty and the brother of the Son, Nebuchadnezzar, those who have offended his brother Holofernes, God of all the armies, are ordered to surrender themselves or to be delivered over within the space of four days. Begins with the rising of the sun this morning. Within the space of four full days, having their beginning with the rising of the sun this morning. At the first light of dawn upon the fifth day, the city will be put to fire and the sword without mercy, and the population utterly wiped out. Men, women, and children will be executed with no exception. The memory of Bethulia will be obliterated. During these four days, no one for any reason whatever may leave or enter through the gates of the city. This is the will and desire of Asher the Almighty and of his great brother, Holofernes. Within four days, now where are we going to be able to find pasturage for the poor flocks they have left to us? Now we will not even be able to go out and cultivate our fields of produce. Whether by starvation or the sword, Holofernes has condemned every one of us to death. That's not true. His proclamation is clear. He wants the assassins. Why should we have to suffer because of their act of madness? And I'm quite certain that in every house in Bethulia, at the sight of the faces of their starving and terrified children, they are all asking the same question that I am. Good night, my son. Trying to kill Holofernes. It was an insane idea. It was absurd. You say that because we failed. No. If one chief dies, another takes his place. Holofernes for them is a great deal more than their leader. He is a demigod. I can almost believe it. Curse him. I can still see him on the stairs all alone there. He must wear armor under his clothes. All those arrows we oh, shot. Oh, he was too far away. And it was dark, too. If only one arrow had really struck him. If only his men could see him dead. Don't you understand? The Assyrians have been fighting for three years. They're exhausted. It's he that keeps them going, and he alone. But one single blow with a dagger would put an end to his legend. Holofernes the immortal. If I could get close to him with a dagger, I'd stab him in the throat if he is wearing a breastplate. A wall of swords surrounds the man, and you don't know how to crawl like Uzziah. Neither are you a woman of evil practice. Ha <laughs> ha, they go in and out whenever they please. The way is always open for the women. They're all in there, swarming around him and his chief officers. It's repulsive. But the Assyrians, at least they eat. And then each one does what he can to save his skin. If we could only find one of them who try to get close to him with a dagger concealed on her. Yes, let's see you find one. They're thinking of themselves. They're all strumpets. However, if one of them could be found with the courage, she'd be considered a saint. The greatest woman in all Israel. No, she'd be stark mad like the rest of you. What do you expect from Holofernes? He's flung his challenge at our God and us. He'll wipe us out in any case. He has sworn it, and he'll keep his oath. And upon the ruins of the temple of God, he will raise up a graven image of his monstrous divinity. He will lead our people away into a new captivity. Night will descend upon Israel. The word of the Lord our God will sound in a desert without echo. God will seek out his people, but he will not find them. Mistress, what is it? Why don't you go to bed and sleep? I don't know. I don't feel sleepy. 
We've decided what we're to do. We're going to surrender. And I'm certain that our father will approve. Isaac. Daniel. David. I own dear sons. By simply bowing our heads before the orders of Holofernes, we'll gain nothing. Maybe that way we'd save the city from death, but not from slavery. Let's understand each other. Isaac is right. And we'll go at the end of the term and give ourselves up. But let's not forget that we still have four days. We need to organize. Let us look for weapons, fighting men. We'll gather together all those who are not willing to be slaves. And let our death be the signal that will set off the revolt. Well then, you're afraid too. Something's got to be done. What do you want to do? Slip out the gate? Run away? Every path is closely guarded. We're prisoners. And yet, Hager, certain women, you understand me? What are you thinking of, Judith? They... They're able to get close to Heliparnus. Yes, indeed. For them, it will be different. They'll be saved. If they only had the courage, they could even redeem the shame they've fallen into. How could they? By killing him. Oh, no, Judith. No woman on Earth would ever have that much courage. And then, Holofernes. What of him? Holofernes gets rid of them very quickly. The first to scorn those women are the Assyrians themselves. It could never be one of them. The word of the Lord our God will sound in a desert without echo. The Assyrians have been fighting for three years. They're exhausted. It's he that keeps them going, and he alone. And upon the ruins of the temple of God, he will raise up a graven image of his monstrous divinity. But one single blow of the dagger would put an end to his legend. Holofernes for them is a great deal more than their leader. He's a demigod. It's he that keeps them going, and he alone. One single blow from a dagger. God will seek out his people, but he will not find them. A woman who would try to get close to him. But one single blow from a dagger. She would be considered a saint, the greatest woman in all Israel. God will seek out his people. A saint, the greatest woman in all Israel. Forgive me for saying it to you, but you don't know what you're doing. I want you to give this to Gabriel and swear that you'll say nothing to anyone. No, I mustn't allow you to do this. I'm going to tell your father. You've always been faithful to me. You've always cared for me loyally. I can't believe you'd really betray me at this moment. But they'll kill you, I tell you. You will never succeed. No, Hager, it's no use. There's something which is stronger than I am that says I must go. And I need you to help me. You've got to help me to do this. Swear it. Yes, Judith. But they'll begin to question me. They'll want to know. Let them think I've sold myself to the conqueror if they want to. Drunken pig. 
considering his affairs and his commerce, the journeys he's made, Ozaya knows every part of Judea, the roads, the mountains, the markets. He also knows where to find flocks and riches. Ozaya knows the people well. And you'd go with us? In order to serve you, I couldn't ask for a greater honor. Is it possible that there's not a single traitor in this town? The great Holofernes is perhaps vexed with his faithful Ozias. I'm beginning to wonder what use you are. I want those assassins alive. You know that. They have arrested a woman who insists upon being admitted into your presence. She says she wants to speak to you, but this dagger was found upon her. Here's what your people are, Ozias. They're a race that's accursed. Bring that woman in. wants you. That was Judy, only daughter of Joseph. I hope they haven't discovered... Silence, it. dog! Get to work! Spreads that epithelia for having offended me. There has not remained a stone upon a stone, nor a living soul. All the other cities of Judea will bow their heads immediately. Of course, of course, but their yielding will be even more certain if it is known that the great Holofernes is magnanimous and generous with those who serve him faithfully. Down on her knees. But she's only a girl. What was it you wanted to tell me? Why were you trying to hide this weapon? Can't you hear? Speak up! It was to defend myself with. When I thought of how your soaps conduct themselves... You must have respect for the Assyrian soldiers like all the rest. Be careful of what you say. Do you know her? Certainly, Judith is her name. They're all a little crazy in her family, overbearing. People far from recommendable. Tell the truth now, they sent you, didn't they? Don't touch me. You must trust in the great benevolence of Holofernes. Let go of me. Take your dirty hands off me, you scoundrel. Did you hear that? She insults one of your faithful... Why, she do anything. You said you wanted to speak with me. Well, I'm listening. I did want to say something to you, but... alone. You're in the presence of Holofernes. It is not for you to make that decision, or even to ask it. I don't think the great Holofernes could possibly be afraid of me. Clear the presence. Come along, girls. Let's go. It must be important. I wonder who she is. Well then, go ahead, speak up. I had so many things to say to you, but now... You must have come here for something. I don't think you're lacking in courage. Now that I'm alone in your presence... I'm a man, you see. I eat and drink. I thought it would be much easier. Much easier to do what? You're a man, yes, but great, powerful, that one admires. When you entered the city, my father kept me closed up in the house. But I watched you from the terrace on our roof, tall and majestic in your chariot, just as I had imagined you in my daydreams. Even now. 
do I make you laugh? I'm so used to compliments and flatterers. The flatterers are probably those who are always close to you, or those who are seeking your favor. But how could you possibly think that a poor girl like me would dare to risk her life to... You're not risking anything. And you know it. You're here because the moment of my vengeance is almost at hand. You're young and don't want to die. That's the reason you're here. And you're right, because you're beautiful. You're insulting when you say such things. I came here because I was following my dream. Every girl in the world has her dreams, didn't you know? You know about officers and soldiers. Perhaps you don't know young girls very well. I decided to come here because I wanted to be your slave girl. To sing and play for you. To dance for you. To cheer you in your hours of sadness. Then why this? I explained that to you. No. Think of another reason in prison. What are we to believe or think? That's what I want to know. You were in Judith's confidence. You were a friend of hers. I can't believe that she told you absolutely nothing. Even if it was only a gesture so that you'd understand. Think again. If I told you it was nothing, well, then it was nothing. Look at me straight in the eyes. Why do you go on tormenting me like this? You see, you only make me burn the bread. Just as if we had plenty of it. Bread that's old and stale. We used to give it to the dogs. <laughs> that must be why. What did you mean by that must be why? Nothing. I just said it for no reason. What did you mean? Speak quietly. Oh, what a lot of fuss you're all making. As if she were the first girl who'd gone to the Assyrians. <gasps> Another bundle of sticks. That's good, Benjamin. Hide them right away along with the others. Don't you want to see them? They're really pretty, you know. Nice and sharp pointed. And I bought such a lot of them. That's fine, Benjamin. Now run and play. What are we going to say to our father? His heart won't bear up under it. I simply can't believe it. Judas, like the others, it can't be true. Be quiet. Sit down here, Father. Judith, where is she? She's coming home later. She's visiting the neighbors. You know, ever since the death of their little boy. Isaac! Who is it? Isaac! What is it? What's happened? I've come here to find out the latest news. I saw them taking Judith away to prison. What did you say? Judith in prison? Yes, didn't you know about Are it? Are you sure of it? I saw her with my own eyes. What are you hiding from me, my children? What do you think would be the reason for it? Why could they have arrested Judith? Tell me, couldn't you find out anything about it? No, nothing. We are watched almost as closely as the prisoners. We are forbidden even to speak to each other. I was beaten only because I interrupted my work for a few seconds when I saw Judith go by. You can imagine what a shock it was. I thought perhaps they had discovered something about our plot. <laughs> Forgive me, Isaac. Please forgive me. I should have told you at once. I should have known that it was impossible. What do you know, Hagar? <laughs> Speak up! She went to the Assyrians to kill Holofernes. She made me swear I wouldn't tell you. Because she was afraid you wouldn't let her go. But now I'm sure they're going to kill her. It's all my fault. That's enough, Hagar. We must think of a way to help her. We must help her to escape right away. They may have condemned her to death. Judith, my dear daughter, do you know exactly where her cell is? Yes, but how could you ever get to it? We've got to get there, no matter how we but do it. there's that tunnel. Perhaps prisoners would be able to escape through it. And it's that same tunnel that we're working on to wall it up. To fight our way in there on the day we plan to attack the palace would be fairly easy. But now, with a few men we have, they've posted dozens of guards. But at night, a few men could hide there. That's right. We must act before it's too late. But you'll have to pass through the garden. There'll be guards posted there, too. Too.
Get up and come with me. Quickly. You're still a prisoner, don't forget it. She's not there. The cell is empty. Then we got here too late. Come in. Weren't you to take me back to my cell? This is now your cell. By order of Halifernes? Certainly it is. the garden. The others, come with me.
Are you afraid of me? No. Do you two think I'm a bloodthirsty barbarian? How could you think that? I went to prison so that I could be with you. Well, here I am. Why do you tremble? A while ago, when you were dancing, every gesture you made was to give me pleasure. And now I can only wonder who you are and what thoughts you're hiding. For years, I've done nothing but fight wars. Deserts, solitude, even when we pitched our tents. Rivers running red with the blood of our enemies and their horses. I can't remember how long it's been since I've seen anyone dance so well. No. Allow me to go away. I beg you. I was mistaken, I know. Have pity on me. In what were you mistaken? Everything. In coming here. Don't ask any more questions. I implore you. Let me go away. Then it is true. What's true? That you came here to kill me. I was thinking of it as you were dancing. If you still had your dagger with you, you'd have managed to get close to me and you would have plunged it into my chest. You were beautiful. A woman who's different from all the others, such as I've always dreamed of and never found. You admire only those who want to kill others. Am I not right, perhaps? Take it. I know what hate is. My profession is making war. And war is only hatred. Did you hear a noise in the garden? Someone had broken in. Why did he? Because he hates me. And now the soldiers of the guard are hunting him down. And someone will have to die. Do you think there can ever be peace? It's a dream. A wonderful dream that everyone has had. And perhaps I can make it come true when I have conquered the entire world. Listen to the silence. The voices of the night are the same all over the world, here and in my own country. If I close my eyes, I can almost believe I'm home again. The air is filled with nearly the same perfume. But if I want to breathe this perfumed air, I must go on making war. I must go on killing. And I should have killed you with the others. Then why don't you do it? Go away. I hate you. I hate you. Holofernes waits for you. There's no need for you to worry. I'll take care of it. He'll give us a safe conduct or else we can go away with him. Hurry and get your things ready. And if he should change his mind, this stuff would drive soldiers mad with greed. But he promised me, I tell you. You want to know something more? How, when, and oh, where it was? stop it now. I don't want to hear anything. Do you hear? Nothing. Why, I actually believe you're jealous. It's only to save your life, you know, and all your riches. To save our lives, you mean. To save our riches, understand? Your life is in danger, too. I? Oh, I don't think so. What makes you so sure of yourself? There's been a change since yesterday. Are you speaking of Judith? Yes. She doesn't worry me at all. Why should she? She's a little monkey who can dance a few steps. She won't last. 
The sons of Joseph and Gabriel want to speak to you. Show them in, Sir Kevin. Show them in. What do you think they want? I don't know. May God be with you, Oziah. And may he be with you always. I imagine you already know our reason for coming here. Why, no. You're free to go in and out of the palace. You see Holofernes every day. You're a friend of the Assyrians, but you also belong to our people. You must give us your help. But I don't see how I can. It's our sister, Judith, that's worrying us. Where have they taken her? What has happened to her? We must liberate her. Ah, may the Lord bless your childish, simple minds, my boys. Why, Judith hasn't the slightest need in the world of our poor assistance. She knows very well how to take care of herself alone with the resources that Mother Nature has given her. And if Hosiah says to you that Judith is far better off than either you or us, you must believe him. Why should you be distressed? Because your sister is shrewder than many others. She'll save you as well. You're lying, Uzziah. They even put her in prison. What are you trying to tell us? And from the prison, she has now passed up to the floor above. That isn't true. It's not possible. Judith hates the Assyrians. Oh, very well. She hates the Assyrians, but certainly not Holofernes. Only the other night, she danced for him. And very well. Isn't that true, Rizba? So well that he liberated her at once. She's moved to the upper floor, as I told you. Beware, Oziah, if you're lying. If instead of coming here and threatening me, you would help me to discover who it was who tried to kill Holofernes, it would be a great deal better. All that's happened here is their fault and no one else's. It's the fault of cowards like you. No, of you crazy fanatics. Oh, I know you. You're a lot of hot-headed idiots. If you'd only pay attention to those hotheads. If everyone had taken up a weapon... You be quiet. Now, let's go. They did it. There's no doubt about it. I've always suspected it was they, but now I'm certain of it. You must denounce them. What proof do we have? Is proof necessary? More than ever. Judith will plead for them. She will protect them. Don't you know that? They'll be the only ones to save themselves, the would-be assassins. <laughs> and if I denounce them, it'll be I alone who will get into trouble. Don't you understand? Proof is what we need. Clear proof. Joachim. Joachim, follow them. I want to know where they go, what they do, and the people they talk to. You can depend on me. I'm betting on the cobras. Two pieces of gold. I accept that. The mongoose will eat them alive. <laughs> He's ridiculous. You'll lose, Akbar. Cobras have a great deal of poison, but very little brains. He bit him. Did you see it? Yes. Look at him get away. Just wait now, Akbar. There's not much to wait for. Look at that. If he catches him, he'll paralyze him with one drop of poison. If he catches him. But look at that now. Your fine cobras don't even help one another. Now he's pretending to be asleep. He's trying to save his own skin. <laughs> Akbar, you'd better get your two pieces of gold ready. It's all over. Just a moment. It's all over. Just a moment. Evil. Didn't I tell you? It was horrible. What so? Struggle, it's life. The law of nature, it's either you or me when you meet an enemy. Isn't it true? And it's such an easy thing for people to be enemies. It's enough to be born in two different countries as we were.
Isn't it so? But why don't you answer me? However, if I look at you, and you look at me, we understand each other. And you attract me. We are not of two different races, you and I. Like those beasts in that pit. This is what I dream of. A single great nation that stretches to the farthest limits of the world. And all the peoples together within it. They don't want to be privates. I'll force them to. Do you believe it's possible to do that? Surely. Only God could do a thing as great as that. Which God is that? Is it my God or your God? Or is it one of those from India, from Egypt? The Lord is the one and only God. No. The world has become infested with gods. There are various races and all enemies of each other. And they're all made of stone or of wood. Oh, they're invisible. I can choose to adore the sun. I can see it. It gives warmth to the earth and makes the fruit ripen. But for that matter, man has muscles and a brain and hands with which to wield a sword. He can make his own way alone. But don't you yourself profess, perhaps, to be a god, too? It's the only way of making my soldiers follow me wherever I go. They need to believe in something or other. They believe in me. You see... You see, there was a time long ago when the great Holy Fairness, today feared by everybody, was only a poor little boy dressed in rags. I've known bitterness, deep poverty, and injustice. The devastation of my homeland and the murder of my mother and father. And I understood, I understood that it's force, which is the only law. I've told you everything there is to know of me. But you've told me nothing of you. I was listening to you, and you almost terrified me. It was very brave of him to come here, wasn't it? It's a great proof of his love. I want to make one of those grand gestures which become part of the legends of the powerful. I'm going to let you go, both of you. And I promise you won't meet the same end as the others. Judith. I'm staying here. You're afraid of it. Why are you holding her in this place? What do you want with her? Why did you put her in prison first and then free her? What's the meaning of all this? And what about you, Judith? Why don't you say something? Or perhaps I understand already. Leave me alone, Gabriel. I want you to go away. You are forcing her to stay here before you said she was free to go away and instead you... You think it's your privilege to do whatever you want to. No! Gabriel! Now give me back that dagger. Fool. You're a young fool! Have pity on him. He lost his head only because of me. If any of my soldiers had seen you do that, I would be forced to kill you right here on the spot. Why didn't you do it then? I don't regret what I tried to do. I would do it again if I had the chance. I will do it again. Your men are still trying to find out who was in the garden last night. It was I looking for her to take her away. Be quiet. Now go away, both of you. I keep my promises. Why did you insist on coming here? You've risked your life and all for nothing. Judith, I beg you to think of all our dreams and of our hopes, too. Everything is finished, I know. But why do you refuse to come away from here? What has happened to you? Do you think you can still manage to kill him? You can't. He said we could go free. Do you realize the real meaning of that? He's capable of forgiveness. No, he only wanted to humiliate me. Anyway, he's going to kill everybody shortly. Oh, no. If I stay close by him, there is more than just evil in him. You're raving now, Judith. That is why my true place is here. If I stay near him, perhaps I can 
Make him change. And I believe that... that he will listen to me. Why? What are you to him, Judith? Judith, answer me. What are you to him? Why should he be willing to listen only to you? sure that I'd go away. Why didn't you go? asleep now. He's calmed down. What else did he say? Always the same thing. He curses her. He keeps saying that he ought to curse her, but that he can't believe it. He doesn't want to believe it. That's good. Come along, Gabriel. We've got a lot of work to do. What's the use of it? What's the use of it? We're crazy, that's all. They're all going to abandon us. There won't be a single man in the city who'll be willing to take a bow and fight. His Holofernes will kill every one of them. And he'll kill them while they're bowing before him, while they're asking his pardon and admiring him, too. And perhaps they'll all be right, because Holofernes is somebody. What do you mean by what you just said, Gabriel? He really is a god, maybe. Look how he's bewitched you. Don't blaspheme. Or else he is a demon. If I could convince him that the attempt on his life was the work of a single person, I'd give myself up to his soldiers this very night so he could kill me before that hideous god of his. At least it would be all over. Oh, Gabriel. Shh, be quiet for a moment. As I was coming here, I saw a man lurking outside. What was it like? I didn't get a good look at his face. He turned away quickly and slipped into the shadows as if to hide. I don't see anyone. Who is it? Peace be with you. I'm looking for Isaac. Go and open the door. We mustn't arouse any suspicion. Hurry! Come along now, quickly. Hurry there. May peace reign always in this house. I believe you are Isaac. What do you want? What do you have to say? Is it safe for me to speak freely? Here we're all good friends. We have no secrets from anyone. Oh, that is excellent. You see, I came here with the intention of telling you that I would like to be one of your friends. I'd like to be with you. What do you mean? I understand that you will say I am one of Ozias' men. But I detest Ozias. Don't you believe me? I serve him, but only to make my living. But I am not on his side. I don't understand what you mean. He's been drinking. How is that? Knowing what is about to happen, aren't you making preparation for something or other? What do you think we could be preparing for, Jorgen? We are all utterly and completely in the hands of God. Especially we who are ordinary, simple people. We pray to him that he will protect us and that his divine will be done. My soldiers hadn't been so battle-weary and famished. I would have passed right by Bethulio without even stopping. Would you have preferred that? I love your beautiful hair. So long, so soft. I'm thinking of when I saw you come into the city in your chariot. It's true, I did see you drive in. Only that... I hated you, just as much as I love you now. I 
I'm afraid. I was less afraid when I still hated you. I love someone I don't even know. I thought I knew exactly what my entire future was going to be like. Whom I was going to marry. The house in which I was going to live. But now I don't know. I don't know. Here is the fine quality of firewood that this young man spends his time collecting. I caught up with him finally. Where? In the lane of the goat herds this morning at daybreak. Hm. A fine family they are, aren't they? The sister plays the strumpet at the palace while her brother... You must speak to him gently. He's a child. Listen, little boy. You're in very bad trouble. You know it? Very well, then. Josiah is able to help you. Josiah can take you to the general's palace where you'll be safe from danger. It's nice being at the palace, you know. You eat there. And uh, your sister's there. So you see? You love your sister, don't you? Very well. Josiah is going to take you to her. And she will be so happy to know that you're now one of our friends. A friend of Hollow Fernie's. And when you grow up, you can become one of the officers in his army. Have you seen their fine uniforms and their beautiful horses? Now, don't you want to help, Josiah? Why don't you answer me? Don't you know how to talk? I've only got one thing to say to you. You make me sick. Now, listen to me. I could very easily be your mother. And if your mother were still living, she would talk to you just as I'm going it's to. It's quite useless, Reese, but can't you see? He's like his brothers. No sign of feeling. No heart at all. Reprobate, that's what they are. But I know exactly how reprobate should be treated. Now then, tell me where and from whom you get those arrows. Speak up. Where did they come from? Where were you taking them? Who gave them to you? You coward! But what are you going to do to me? If you should kill me, they'll execute you. Holofernes will avenge my death. Why? Tell me why you want to ruin yourself. You've got every possibility of saving yourself. Tell, tell me, do you, do you need any money? Hosea, Hosea had plenty. His chest full. Here, take it, take it. You two, take them out of here. Where? What are you going to do with us? Didn't you say you wanted to be with us? You're a queen. Do you like them? I've never had any jewels. Is that possible? Not even a necklace? Yes, I did have a necklace. Long ago. I've had a special carriage built for you. It has an awning to protect you from the sun. So now you can follow my chariot wherever I go. What is it? How could I ever follow you? Why not? Knowing that I left behind me a cemetery. That is war. Or is it only that you have willed it? No. It's that war has a will all its own. One day, we've been in easy vengeance upon a poor boy who was driven by love. One of those gestures had become part of the legends of the powerful. That's what you said. Just think. A gesture like that, but toward my entire people. 
You've become Holofernes' woman now, and your people... The members of your family. No, that's not what I mean. The image of you that I carry in my heart is the image of a man who knows how to understand and to forgive. For that I have loved you. How could you calmly and coldly give the order for an entire city to be slaughtered? Don't you think of the screams and the bloodshed? You're so very anxious about the blood of all the others. And what of mine? Is it water in a ditch, perhaps? How do you know those fanatics won't try to assassinate me again? No, you're mighty. You're Hall of Fairness. You can afford to be generous. You can afford to have pity. What is it? The officers are waiting for you. Is there something new? Inspire him. Give him your guidance, because he is truly good in the depths of his heart. They found him a short time ago with an arrow sticking out of his chest. I went to his house myself to look for him. He'd been missing so long. Is that all the news there is? But don't you understand? The murder of Uzziah is an affront to yourself. Well, perhaps it was simply a robbery or retaliation. No, there were a great many jewels in the house. No one had touched anything. And there were a lot of other arrows. There are weapons in the city. And I am certain Josiah was well on the way to delivering up the would-be assassins to us. They did it, I'm sure. Allow me to unleash the soldiers upon the cities we've always done, with permission to plunder and kill. Oh. The ultimatum expires tomorrow. And Josiah? Josiah was not an Assyrian. Anything else? There's a messenger here from the Emperor. He arrived last night. Very well, let's listen to what he says. Show him in. Afterwards, I must have the orders for tomorrow. Oh, splendid Holofernes, the brother of the sun, Nebuchadnezzar, sends you his greeting. Very well, give me the message. The brother of the sun desires that your army shall reach and make conquest of the capital of Egypt before the coming winter. Before the coming winter? Did you hear that? What provision have you made for tomorrow? To go from house to house and rout out every single person inside and then drive them in the direction of Eastern Gate. And when they are all massed together there, our archers will move forward and go into action. It'll be child's play for them. These people will not allow themselves to be massacred so easily. They will turn on us and give battle, even if it's with stone. We will crush them. But I'm wondering, if for a rabble of miserable shepherds and imbecilic fanatics, it's worthwhile sacrificing even a single one of our men. I swear I don't understand you. You don't want to take action any longer, but don't you realize? This expedition is for the conquest of Egypt. What obliges us to bring our sovereign lands that he hasn't asked for? You won't be able to conquer either Egypt or a single worthless village if you haven't first carried out the vengeance which you promised. How do you think you'll make the soldiers understand your reasons? They will only believe you've become weak. They will wonder how it is possible that a conquered people could dare rebel and conspire Kill our officers and make attempts upon your very life. When the news of this gets around, all the peoples will immediately cease to fear us. We'll have a hundred, a thousand such attempts. It's true, great warlord. It's better to lose a few soldiers and maintain our prestige. And our renown for being cruel and merciless. It is this renown that opens all roads to us. You have sworn vengeance. You took an oath that you conquered Jerusalem as well. I am here to carry out the orders of my emperor. Nothing else. So you've been brought to this by a woman of Judea. Now you've gone too far. How do you dare to say that? I'll kill you! I'll kill you! Have you forgotten who I am? Who among you accuses me of weakness? What is it that none of you will speak? Which of you shares the opinion of this idiot here? It is not we who accuse you, but the soldiers. I want to know what the soldiers say. The rumor is going around. The other women have been taken and cast aside. You know that's how the soldiers like it. 
But with this one, it's different, and the whole army knows it. You can kill me if you wish, but I don't have to tell you that the only thing that matters to me is your glory and the glory of the Assyrian army. Let the herald cry the proclamation through the city for the last time. Those men who have dared to offend the great Holofernes, God of war, and the armies must either surrender themselves or be delivered over to the Assyrians. Over to the Assyrians. If this order is not carried out, tomorrow at break of day the city shall be put to fire and the sword, and the entire population, including men, women, and children, shall be executed without exception or mercy. This is the will of the divine Asher and of his glorious brother, Holofernes. There was no other course left me to take. I did what I could, but it was impossible. And your soldiers say that you are a god. Is there something then that is impossible for a god? It is much easier to invade and conquer an enemy nation than to act differently from the way things have always been done. You must always live up to what is believed of you. And then you'll see. Before dawn, they'll deliver the guilty men. There's no doubt of it. They'll be executed as they well deserve, and the city will be saved. No. It'll be the end of everything anyway. If I hadn't happened to do it, it would have been done by some other general sent on this expedition. That's the law of war. I want a drink tomorrow, I'll sleep. Here, drink with me. But you should. You see nothing, you hear nothing, and you know nothing. Tomorrow, when we wake up again, it'll all be over and done with. I've done the same thing other times. I've really tried, Judith. But as I was talking, I could feel the eyes of my officers upon me. They thought I was timorous and undecided. I must be just as they've always known me. Why do those blundering fools try to assassinate me? They forced me to do as I did. Judith. Come to me. Do you hate me? No. Do you think I don't love you? No. Tomorrow by this time we'll already be gone. Put your little hand in mine. Your skin is so soft and delicate. Tomorrow we shall be far away from here. And within a year we'll be home in my country. Have you ever seen my country? No. There's a great river which cuts across it. The land here is arid, but there everything is a rich green. Especially along the river banks. The river is so very broad that in some places you'd think it was the sea. Have you ever been to the sea, Judith? I've never been away from my city. How I love the sea. Perhaps if I had my life to live over again, I'd be a navigator. The sea is boundless. And when the waves roll beneath you, you feel a great freedom from everything. I'd like to sail across the sea with you. One day we'll sail together, won't we? Yes. I'll do everything to make you forgive me. Do you believe it? I believe you. Sometimes we have to do things in spite of ourselves that we wish we didn't have to do. That's true. Do you still love me?
What do you want, Belial? Have you come here again to try to hinder our designs? No, my beloved brothers. I have come to bring you the benediction of the Lord and to tell you that my heart is with you. The entire city is with you. We must perish, perhaps, one and all, but let us not lose our faith in the power of the love of freedom. We thank you with our whole hearts. Give us your benediction, Father. Hey, dog, stay where you are. Hold right. Hey, here you. I'm the 
Judith! Judith! No, leave me alone. Go away. Why, what is the matter, my sister? The city has been saved, didn't you know? We're all safe again now. No. No. I'm not. But why not? You don't know that I've betrayed my people. You have betrayed them. You mustn't touch me! I'm a curse of God! I've betrayed my people! And because of it, you must kill me at once. You still have your swords in your hands. Kill me immediately. I have no more hope. Before me, there is only the long night full of darkness. And I will be alone, always. That's not true, Judith. Even if that monster has dared to touch you. That monster? I loved him then. And I shall love him. <laughs> Yes, my daughter, weep. You have loved your people more than you have yourself. You have given back their lives to those who were about to die. Come now. Come with me back home again. And you will not be alone. Do not ask her anything. Don't care anything. <laughs> 